can I, Ram Madhav ji, with your permission, just bring you in on this? Because you got India sitting there, Bangladesh sitting here. I'm very confused sitting somewhere in the middle. Because you complete this exercise, let's assume we identify a certain number, 35 lakhs, hypothetically. No, I you think, I think you're, you're getting into a hypothetical. No, I'm just asking. No, no, this is a hypothetical thing. Let us be very clear. Let this process complete. And any country, any country, when uh, somebody in the, uh, in the United States wants to uh, repatriate somebody back to say to India, Indians are not going to accept it unless the Indian okay, consulate... Okay, so let me done. ask Ram Madhavji that question. Now the government of Bangladesh tells your government, tells our government, so prove that these are Bangladeshi nationals, then we'll take them back. Then yeah, what What uh, uh, Mr. Rijvi is saying is in a way the process that needs to be followed at the government's level. There's no doubt about it. You cannot push people into another country without uh, that country accepting them. Uh, that, that is how it works. In fact, Bangladesh themselves have the issue of Rohingyas, which they are trying to settle through a, again, a process, I would call it. They're following the due process. And then there are international agencies, like United Nations, uh, as Rajdeep mentioned, that uh, refugee commission is there. There will be so many things that we will take into account. We are two friendly countries. The importance of our relationship is paramount for us. Keeping that in mind, we can definitely find a solution to it. But again, I'm repeating, as he knows, as we know, there's a process that needs to be completed first before we reach that stage. Exactly. When we reach there, we are mature enough to handle it in a very... He also a, says the government of India has never taken this up with the government of Dhaka. As, that, the reason also he gave, he said right now, the process is at number one D. There are three Ds we have to do. Detect, delete, and then comes deport. Mm. First D we have started. We will see. Let, let, me, let me make one uh, additional thing. I don't think the comparison between Rohingyas and suppose if so, uh, those, suppose they are Bangladeshis, are valid. Because the Rohingyas have been persecuted. Rohingyas have for generations been living in Myanmar. And they were deliberately thrown out of the country as a part and process of ethnic cleansing. So I don't think the comparison holds. Secondly, what we are saying in, in Bangladesh and the whole world is saying that ethnic cleansing is not acceptable. One thing we must all realize that in every state there are minorities. And if we start saying we will send some minorities away, it's unacceptable, it is not possible, it will not be done. India itself will not allow that to happen. India is a democracy. India is a secular state. So I, let us be very, very clear. There is an important distinction to be made between the Rohingyas and uh, uh, allegedly illegals in the northeast of India. How is there a difference? Because in India, both are living illegally on our soil. And we would like, if you ask people in general, the populist opinion on the street would be all illegal infiltrators no. should be sent packing. In the case of Rohingya, there's a big difference. When they cross the border, we issued them with IDs, we photographed them, we took their fingerprint under international auspices of the UNHCR and International Organization of Migration. So we have complete record of who has trespassed or migrated into Bangladesh. Uh, this, is, this is the sort of documentation which Myanmar will have to respect when it, we are sending this back. And also please remember that military in Myanmar has decided that Rohingya as an entire ethnic group is unacceptable on the soils of Myanmar. This is genocide. This is ethnic cleansing. How on earth are we going to compare the two? 